DWI, no driver's license, I don't trust him. Our number one reoccurring question after all these years is why doesn't he drive? And today we're finally going to answer that question. Again. Again. Some of the comments actually saying, what does he even do? <laughs> was the, so, the best it's one. so inappropriate. Well, to answer this question fully, we need to go back. Way back. Well, not that far back. How about here? Mm, no, let's skip ahead a little. Ah, uh, yes, it was the summer of 2018 and we were just a few short months away from embarking on our crazy new journey of full-time RV living. We had everything buttoned up. Chris had just begun her fitness and nutrition coaching business and we were both getting after it pretty heavy. Well, I probably should have listened to my coach, <clears throat> wife, more on my form and I ended up hurting my back. At least I think that's what happened. It was kind of weird because it wasn't one incident that caused it. It slowly ramped up to severe back and leg pain. I got an MRI, but it was inconclusive. I think it was a pinched nerve in my lower lumbar and this condition ended up lasting a year. The worst position I felt it in was sitting in a vehicle. So that started Chris out with doing all of the driving in our Sprinter van. I was able to get up when needed, stretch, walk around, and that helped me better deal with the pain. I'll also note at this time we were on the East Coast driving in some of the biggest metropolitan areas of the country. And back home, Chris did have a lot more experience driving in the busy downtown Minneapolis areas, and I was more driving in the burbs. So we kind of fell into this routine of Chris doing all the driving. And while it started out as an injury that kept me out of the driver's seat, what continued it was the progression of this YouTube channel and filming our RV journey. But all that changed in 2021 when we bought our truck and travel trailer. The plan was for me to do the driving at first because I had more towing experience and for us to cross train Chris after a little while down the road. Well, I ended up doing all the towing for about three months and then this happened. Well, sometimes life throws a few curveballs at you, and it's definitely been a rough couple weeks. I am not nervous about driving in the forward position. I'm a little nervous about the reversing into a very tight campsite at the RV park that we're going to. I ended up going to urgent care, and it's not broken, but it's a pretty severe sprain. It's on my right foot. So this is pretty fresh. It only happened a few days ago and there's just no way I can safely drive right now. So again, an injury sent me back to the passenger seat, but here I still sit today, healed and injury free. So why am I still not driving today? Again, this is kind of a complex question, but I think it's easiest and most concise answer as we have both fallen into our comfort zone of our current roles and we're both happy. When I was driving, I had to force Chris into the filming role. And filming for a YouTube channel like ours is a full-time job. We do a lot of our filming on travel days, and this is my full-time job. And it's just not her natural spot. She's the full-time fitness and nutrition coach, and that's where this just works best for both our roles. Will I ever tow again? Of course I will. Well, probably. Yeah. <clears throat> Today is a big day because Aaron is going to dust off the cobwebs from his right foot, which was sprained earlier this year. And as a result, I was doing all of the towing for the past six months. I'm the driver today, but I don't know where the keys are. Am I nervous about towing? Not really. And? Tow haul mode. That's yep, not, oh, uh oh. That's not tow haul. Oh my gosh, my, like, my life is flashing before my eyes. Wiper check. <laughs> Am I a little nervous? Yes. Alright, I'm gonna try not to ruin anything. You are like a fresh 15 year old driving right now. Yep. 
Gotta be careful, we're in a busy campground. There's literally nobody out here. <laughs> What I've really enjoyed about towing is just knowing that it's easy and I'm good at it. Like I took the situation and I thrived and I did really well. I am part of the Inside Trucker Club. Yes, there's there's just an unspoken um, friendship there where I'm all about flashing the high beams, letting them in, tapping the hazards, saying thank you. I'm definitely part of that club. Will Aaron be accepted? I don't know. Will he fit into that club? I'm not sure. <laughs> and the burning question is going to be, of course, which one of us is the better tower. So if you have a guess on who you think will reign supreme, let us know. No more free rides for me. And yes, you have to start wearing shoes. <laughs> I just said, Aaron, you can't wear flip flops when you're driving. That's a big safety no-no. So I'm already putting down the rules. It's going to be different for me because I now can have my laptop and do some work. Now that I'm talking, I'm finding out dislikes. So when you're driving all day, obviously you can't do any work. So I'm excited to be able to get some stuff done and be productive. Okay. Hopefully the backstory helps a little bit with answering this question, but you know, it's really not that simple. And I feel like we need to open up this little round table discussion, including you guys, to talk about this a little bit because it's really quite unusual. If you think about it, why are we getting asked this question so much? Just because I'm a woman? Maybe. And there's a couple things I wanna read really quick to, to open up this conversation. And I haven't fact checked this yet. So this is not necessarily, this is just what I'm reading off the internet, which is kind of what we're talking about anyways, being on YouTube, having these comments said to us, it's all out there, it's on the internet. So according to the internet, the driver's license started being introduced in 1910, and there was no law to prevent women from getting them. And it says, of course, women have been driving horse-drawn vehicles for centuries by then. So there's no law preventing women from getting like a driver's license. Like, we're so hazardous. Now, oddly enough, there are laws in certain countries, and apparently up until 2018 in Saudi Arabia, women could not drive motored vehicles. That's just so sad in so many ways. I don't even know how to respond to that. But that's not what we're talking about here. This is America. Chris is allowed to drive <laughs> the RV. But yeah, stereotypes. That's, that's kind of uh, what we're talking about here. Yeah, so most of the comments are all about, they all involve the terms he, she, wife, husband, and basically just questioning why I'm driving. I go through a mix of emotions when I read all of these because it is so overly scrutinized, overly commented on, and it's bizarre that it's even a talking point. It's bizarre that it's the number one thing that we're asked. Of all of the information and experience and knowledge that we carry, that's the one question people want to ask us. And I think about women driving. A couple of our good friends that are also full-timers yes. do the primary amount of towing in their relationship with their partners. It just doesn't seem like it's a weird thing to me, and it's something we've never even really thought about and it's it's odd that it keeps coming up you know comment after comment yeah and I happen to really enjoy driving I love driving I love being in control of the highway I love driving in the city I've always been an active driver my entire life back in my corporate life I used to commute three to four hours every single day like it's just something I'm super comfortable doing and in our situation, it makes sense for so many reasons, and it makes me happy. And it's something that I'm really good at. And why does it need to be a thing? It shouldn't even be a thing. One other fun fact that I thought was interesting was, it says, in the 1950s, about half of adult women had a driver's license. And by 1960, that was about 34 million registered drivers 
being women. I wonder if that relates though to maybe back in those days there was only one household car. Yeah, it does. The, you know, as you go decade by decade, it, you know, it even talks about, you know, by the 20s, you know, women were becoming more independent and, you know, having a two car household, I guess, was maybe becoming more popular as the decades went on. I would like to just stop and bring up some positivity out of this, which is we do get a few small chunks of really positive comments from men and women mm -hmm. saying that I am an inspiration for her to drive or for his wife to start driving or like I want to learn to drive and be like you, you're inspiring me or oh, I drove for the first time the other day because of you and it felt amazing. You know, and when I get those messages, mm -hmm. it's like the opposite feeling where it's just like so inspirational, so empowering. And to know that somebody else is out there basically crushing fears and getting behind the wheel when they never felt that they could. Yeah. And, and is that, is that, are they felt that way because the society and the way that we are treating each other and like putting that fear in each other and preventing them from even trying. And then here's us inspiring and empowering and saying you can do it. And maybe you don't jump in right away and start driving 100% or towing 100%, but you can take little baby steps to get yourself comfortable and to get some confidence and to start feeling really positive about it. We've even had some comments talking more about like the safety aspect of it where, um, you know, their husband always does all the driving in the motor home, but they had a health scare or something along those lines and the spouse needed to be able to step up to drive their RV somewhere or yeah. to get somewhere or to do something. That's probably something that people don't think about that often, but there's a lot of benefits to having both people be able to drive. And as we've showed before in some of our past videos, you know, with my injury, like, you know, it was a thing that Chris got thrown into driving the travel trailer for the first time ever because of a freak accident that happened, you know? So it, it's definitely something that, um, you know, makes sense. And I don't want to say I'm glad you sprained your ankle, but <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad that it got me behind the wheel and look at us now. Look at me now. It really pushed the trajectory like back to the way it was continuing with you doing all the driving. Yeah. Because you know? with the yeah. travel trailer, it switched to me driving right away just because I had more experience with a trailer. And then, you know, it literally got shoved right back to you. And it's and it's been that way, you know, ever since. Yeah. So. And look at me now. I have 40,000 miles of towing, straight towing experience. And if you've watched our shows, you know that I like to just claim that I'm part of the Truckers Club. I like to give myself all sorts of titles of achievements. And why? Because I'm having fun with it. This is a fun lifestyle. Yeah. It's all about traveling being on the road, exploring, and the sense of freedom. And I love being behind the driver's seat. So maybe the next question is, will I be doing more of the driving? And you know, the way I kind of see it going, I, I don't think so. Like it's just what we have <laughs> going right now is, is working. Um, like I've mentioned, you know, I do a lot of the filming or all of the filming and editing and a lot of our channel is the driving and the journey and you know that portion of RVing and it's really hard to do that if you're if you're driving so yeah. it, it takes a lot to make these videos and it's it's a full-time it's a full-time job so yeah. you know this combination between the two of us is working out very well but I probably should do more driving or at least every so often continue to do it just so I don't get too rusty. <laughs> and I must say that like RVing has a lot of aspects to it. The RV lifestyle is often perceived as something that's super easy, constant vacation, just glamour all the time. And that couldn't be any further from the truth. Like this lifestyle while it has a lot of positives, it also has a lot of challenges. And 
a lot of those challenges are like maintaining and keeping your RV operating, which is something that Aaron does 100% of. And nobody is chiming in and saying, why doesn't Chris? Why don't I help with the electrical system? Yeah, why doesn't Chris install the electrical why system? Why don't I help trying to like fix and be, do all the handiwork? Like you guys don't even see what I don't do. And I just think it's really unfair to judge Aaron. Like some of the comments actually saying, what does he even do? <laughs> those are the, <laughs> so those are the best ones. It's so inappropriate. What do you even do here? He does a lot. I say all the time that I would never ever be able to RV without him because he keeps our house afloat. He keeps things working the way that they should work. And we really don't take offense to any of these comments. Um, I, you know, stereotypes are stereotypes for a reason. They're very hard yeah. to break. They've been instilled generation after generation after generation. Yeah. The RVing industry itself is an older generation. Most of our viewers are in their 50s, 60s, 70s. Yeah. So I hate to say it is what it is because I don't like that saying, but it's interesting to me to, to hear and read these types of comments when it's like something that, that I don't even think about. I think it is driven by curiosity for yeah. the most part. Hopefully it's Hopefully. sincere, innocent curiosity, just wondering why, because you know typically men do more of the RVing, driving, I guess, you know, it's, it's not weird to see a woman driving a car or a school bus mm -hmm. or a semi. I mean, you wouldn't look at a semi and see a woman driving and be like, how the hell is she even doing that? Yeah. You know, it's just, it's interesting that, that the RV lifestyle really does have this stereotype around it. So I don't think we're going to be breaking the stereotype <laughs> and solving the world's problems, but maybe maybe a little bit maybe person by person you don't know how many people you've touched that uh you know maybe haven't made any comments that's true yeah yeah and i do love seeing those comments so if i have inspired you to even think about driving maybe you haven't even started driving but maybe you're like maybe someday i'm gonna try let us know and let us know that it is something that you like seeing yeah and let us know what you think about this entire topic <laughs> And even if you don't have anything to add, just say, why doesn't he drive? <laughs> no, <don't> say <laughs> just put that in the comments below. Why doesn't he drive? Why? Is it a DWI? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it for today's video. We really appreciate you guys watching, and we're gonna see y'all on the next one. But one more question. Let's hear it. Who's Irene? Who is Irene? That used to be the number one question. Not anymore! It's a wrap! Was it fun?